Okay, so we have the basic setup done on the Xtool P2. I'm going to show you what comes next. And, uh, first of all, we've talked about the dual camera before. It has a, a fisheye camera here. And then underneath here, you can see is a close-up camera. Um, this is the head, and that comes off with, with magnets. And you can see the, the nozzle in there and all the other components. <coughs> There's one of the... The mirrors right there so the laser comes out of that hole in the back comes into here bounces off a mirror comes out here goes through the the window on the side of the head and then down through the nozzle the next step is they ship it without the coolant in it which is probably pretty clever um, there's no way it's going to leak during shipping or anything like that so we're going to have to remove some screws here and then go around the back and remove some screws to take this back cover off and then it comes with a funnel and the funnel is used to fill it up and there's a calculation that you do how much coolant and how much water to use based upon the minimum temperature that it gets in your area i live near palm springs so it rarely gets below zero degrees celsius so i use pure distilled water so got some distilled water sitting up here ready to go not deionized water not purified water not bottled water not tap water distilled water only <coughs> If you live somewhere that it gets cold, then distilled water and coolant mixed in the ratio that Xtool recommends. All right, I'll get started on removing those screws now. So the screwdriver that it comes with has a Phillips head and a hex head. And to get the screw to take out the, the tray was Phillips. But to get these other ones out, you flip it around and use the hex head. Here's a chart for how to fill the tube depending on the temperature, the lowest temperature in your area. So for my area, we're going to put 1400 milliliters of purified water in it. We put 1100 milliliters in, put the lid on, turn the laser on, the level will go down a little bit, then we add 300 more. Okay, for my area, we start with 1100 milliliters. Um, I'm using a big graduated cylinder because I'm at a science -y school, um, but it does come with coolant and it comes with a, a bottle that you can measure from as well. Okay, now we plug it in and turn it on. The level will go down and we add about 300 milliliters more. Before you fire it up, there's an emergency stop button here. You push it for, in case of emergency and you twist it to make sure that the power for the laser can come on. You can see the water starting to flow through the tube. Just in case I were to spill or something, I unplugged it, turned it off, and I'll add the last 300 milliliters of water. Because this is a sealed system, you should never have to fill this water again, but 
I would keep the funnel just in case. Uh, you never know if something leaks or you have to replace the, the pump or something like that. You might have to drain the water out of it. So might as well hang on to it, but you should never need it. Okay, now I'm just going to put the back cover back on again. Popping it on and putting all the screws back in. Remember never to move the head or the arm very quickly because a motor is just a generator in reverse. So when you move this arm, it spins the motor when you generate electricity and sends it back through the laser. And the faster you move it, the more electricity you generate. So always move it slowly if you have to move it with your hand. Okay, so we're just about all set up now. The only thing left we'd have to do is hook up the hose to take the smoke outside. Um, we'll do that later. It's not in its final resting place right now, but it will be shortly. So some unique things about this laser that I'd like to show you. Once I removed the top of the head that's just held on with magnets, you can see there's another mirror in there. There's a servo motor or a stepper motor uh, to do autofocus. And then there's a board for the camera. But there's also this hose right here that the air passes through for the air assist. So air assist helps you cut better. It also keeps smoke from going up inside where the lens is and getting your lens dirty. So occasionally some smoke could get in and get to the other side of this mirror and smoke could get in and get to the other side of this mirror. You have to clean those as well as the lens that's up under underneath the head there. Um, the camera that's at the bottom of this board could also get dirty and you have to clean that. And then back in there is another mirror where the laser comes out of the tube, bounces off that mirror, and then comes through here. And not much smoke should get through that tiny hole, but you probably should check it now and then. Also, it has a feature that when you close the lid and start the laser, this pin comes out and locks the lid down. So when it's running, you cannot lift this lid up unless you hit the emergency stop button. Um, over here. If you hit that emergency stop button, then the pen will go in and you can lift it up. For somebody who uses a laser at a school, that, that's a pretty good feature. That's safe. Uh, not only lifting the lid turns it off, but it's impossible to lift the lid. That's a feature I like using a laser with teenagers. Okay, so that's it. Now it's all set up except for hooking up the exhaust hose in the back. And that's a really simple process. Uh, after that, we'll install the software, plug in a USB cable, and we'll be ready to go. So keep watching, and next time we'll fire up the laser and see how she works. I also have down here these extra boxes of the risers so that you can engrave really thick things as well as the auto feed pass through slot wheels. So we'll be testing those shortly and see how that goes as well.